Good morning. Good morning. It is your coach, Carla Nicole. Hope everybody is doing amazing. So, um, I wanted to talk about something really quick. Um, let's discuss why. I know we talk a lot about cheating. So let's talk about why cheating seems to happen. Can we do that for a minute? Um, first of all, cheating has really, um, through my past relationships, has really been an issue. Uh, <laughs> and it was not pretty for for majority of my relationships in the past. Um, I exhausted a lot of my energy on it. Um, and, and I've outgrown the whole cheating issue. Um, but I want to talk about some of the some of the things that I think we don't really think about. I think we spend a lot of time play, uh, playing the blame game or we get frustrated by um, how it happened and who it was with and all of this stuff. But I want to talk about something that's outside of just the fact that there was a violation of trust or lies told or deceit. Um, a lot of times cheating or um, extra relationships become, uh, I would say, evolved or, or become an issue in your relationship is nine times out of ten because what was happening in the beginning of the relationship either changes and fizzles um, or it become or it becomes um, very mundane very boring and the couple or the people involved in the relationship be begin to get a little bit frustrated because you know the way they they remember the relationship um, to be in the beginning isn't the same. So I want to talk about that for a minute. I think we don't often talk about um, the magnetism that we have in the beginning of the relationship. Usually, it usually draws why we spend so much time with each other, why we decided to become a unified relationship to begin with. But then what happens is something happens and changes. Either we have conflicting schedules um, or we're no longer engaged at the same level we were in the beginning or um, we begin to outgrow each other because our taste and our things and our beliefs and things of that nature begin to change. And so when those things change, a lot of times we don't want to think about Oh, since these things have changed, I think that maybe I need to pay attention to the fact that those changes have now impacted our harmony, our, our alchemy, our joy with each other. This is the reason. This is the source of why deceit, cheating, infidelity, whatever you want to call it, begins to happen. It happens because, again, I'm going to say this. It happens because either we are not in sync, we're no longer in the same joint mindset, we don't have the same, uh, again, we don't have the same opinion or we begin to get more, you know, combative with each other, we're no longer finding energy within what we have, we're not finding that to be joyful anymore because now it's like, I don't really have the same interest you have and I can't see myself and you anymore and any longer so then because there is an absence of socialization or engagement or loving ways that we have with each other a lot of times what happens is it starts to fizzle it starts to fade and so when it starts to fizzle and fade we start to find other ways to which we are filling in what we used to have with each other so here's the thing. A lot of times we don't want to admit that there are some things that become deficient. What becomes deficient in the relationship we're in is now needing to be um, filled or fulfilled, basically. So basically, in a nutshell, 
when you're feeling like, man, I just, I'm not getting what I need anymore from this dynamic, from this unification of relationship with you. I'm now in a, in a position where I'm now seeking to find something to, um, best, best intrigue me, best get me more excited about life again. Because since we have this absence with the you and I, now I'm wanting to fulfill it with someone else. So I always want to tap into the, the source rather than talking about, well, this person is messing around. I'm going to beat her up. I'm going to beat him up and I'm going to find out what's going on rather than doing all of that. We need to sit down and ask each other, well, you know, are you good here? Are you happy to be in this arrangement with me now? We don't check in in our, in our relationships enough. We just assume because we've been together for 10, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 20, 40 years that everything is fine. But our assumption could be dead wrong. They might not be fine because in different seasons, in different relationships, we tend to change and move into different newfound dimensions of ourselves. So with that said, sometimes certain parts and, and, and pieces of our relationship can begin to get deficient. And if we don't talk about it, because of course we want to say, oh, everything is great. If we don't talk about the deficiencies, then guess what? <laughs> We're going to find out, oh no, my man or my woman is talking or, or my lovers that I'm involved with are talking to other people because they're not fulfilled here anymore. And that's what it is. So a lot of times we don't want to talk about this, but this is the reason. We always talk about what's the outcome, which is cheating, right? But we don't want to talk about what caused the cheating to happen. Because a lot of times nobody really wants to talk about that. But here's another here's another nugget you may, maybe you want to consider. When you're in a relationship and you are full of magnetism and you're beautiful, you're handsome, you know, people come up and talk to you, you have a great rapport, people draw to you. And say for instance, you're in a position, you're either somewhere or you are on the phone or someone inboxes you and they are attractive. They are someone that's attractive that you would draw to if you were not in this relationship you're in. And they draw to you and you are like, wow, really, you know, pretty flattered and 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 uh and a little bit like oh okay when you get to those points and when someone approaches you that's attractive that you would that you would you would welcome if you weren't in the dynamic you're in you need to share that with your current man or your current woman because the problem is a lot of times we don't ask or check in to see what well, does our lover really get approached and if they are what do they say <laughs> What do you say when a beautiful woman or handsome man approaches you? And in that response, you will find oh, a lot about oh. how your lover feels about the relationship you're in with them. There's some data right there you can get that you would not actually get from them just sharing with you that information. Oh, you, oh. Read, you will actually learn something about how your lover feels about being in the relationship they're in with you. If someone approaches you and you're like, hey... I'm good. I'm fabulous. I appreciate the approach. I am flattered that you are asking me, you know, my, my, my relationship status, but I'm good. I'm good. So when you say that you're good and how you say it, let your lover know, listen, there was a very attractive, handsome man that approached me and I was just flattered by him, him asking me. And if I wasn't cool right here with what we got going on, trust and believe I probably would have went a little bit farther, but because you and I are good, I don't need it. I'm great. I'm fine. Sometimes your lovers need to know that you're being approached because they can get laxed and assume that you and you and them are just going to be perfect forever. And that's not true. We have to be honest with self. Sometimes we will go through phases. We'll go through times where we feel like, is this really what I want to be in? Is this sufficient for me? Do I want to entertain something else? Do I want to date someone else? Do I want to break up and kind of get away from this person for a while? These are the truths that nobody wants to talk about, but they don't want to talk about it. So what they do is they curtail the truth and then they start spewing out lies because they don't want to admit to themselves that there's some deficiencies here you don't want to admit to.
And so you begin to do underlying things. You begin lying. You, be, you begin doing things behind their back. You begin hushing everything up. You're locking your phone. You're doing all the things that are going to resemble that you're cheating. But you don't want to admit it to yourself. But that's what's going on. So because of that, we need to sit down and stop getting so caught up in trying to perfect how we're going to, you know, be in these extra relationships that you know is not feasible in the relationship dynamic you're in now if you're in an open relationship it still may be it still maybe requires you to be open and upfront with deficiencies because even when you're open and in a poly relationship you're still going to have moments where there's going to be deficiencies so even if it's not because of the, the the other person or the cheating per se it could be that because there's deficiencies within the dynamic you're in it may be because of that that the relationship is fizzling, fading, not full of luster anymore. And this is what's important. A lot of times we don't want to talk about why the cheating is happening. We only talk about it happening. But let's, ta let's talk about the why. And when we just take a moment and think about it, we'll understand that, man, maybe I should um, be, be more mindful that all of this that's going on is because of the fact that there's some deficiencies here. I'm not getting, a lot of my needs aren't being met. And I'm not talking about just sexually. Maybe it's socially, maybe it's intellectually, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's not enough time being shared. Maybe we're too busy. And so when you have those kind of things going on, you need to talk about it and then you need to make a decision. The only reason why cheating is so hot and a big topic and all that stuff isn't necessarily the extra cheating or se or sexual activity going on, but more or less it's about the lies, deceit, and the hiding of it that causes so much headache and heartache long term. I hope I helped somebody. Make sure you share this video. Again, um, these are things that we need to talk about, we need to think about, because a lot of people get caught up in the cheating, but it's really what's the source of it, what's causing it, why is someone being deceitful? They're being deceitful because there's some, some needs not being met. And one thing is for certain, that no matter what, no matter what relationship you're in, you have needs that have to be met. And if those needs aren't met, whether you're poly or mono, it doesn't matter. If those needs aren't being met, there's going to be supplements that you are going to try to apply in your life to fill up the lack, period. Just what it is. I'm just here to tell you. This happens in relationships all the time. It's not because of just the fact that, oh my God, it's this, it's that. It's not just about that. Sometimes it's circumstantial. And we have to talk about these as well, outside circumstances. You may have to move for your job or something. You're constantly have a higher demand in your job so you're not able to be in a great rapport with your lover. All of these things can happen which can impact the fluidity of what you have with each other. And now we're frustrated because we wanted this relationship to be this way, but now it's not. I hope I helped somebody today. It's your coach, Carla Nicole. I'm signing off, guys. Best kept.